to Cybersecurity Distilled with Andy Bennett. Thank you for joining us for the next episode of Cybersecurity Distilled, a show designed to break down the complex problems, concepts, and technologies facing cybersecurity professionals today while exploring the complex flavors of our favorite distilled spirits. I'm your host, Andy Bennett, and in my day job, I'm the CISO of Apollo Information Systems, and this is an Apollo Information Systems production. With me here today is my friend, Brian Gutierrez. Brian, tell us a little bit about yourself. Oh, hey, Andy. Well, uh, thanks for having me. This is going to be a a good time. I am a uh, technology uh, salesperson slash consultant. I've been in the business for about 20 years with a few different cybersecurity companies, and and so uh, I'm also happen to be a father and a husband in the uh, North Texas area. And so uh, that's that's really my number one job. And I think we're going to talk a little bit about that today, right, Andy? We are. You're skipping ahead in the script. We're going to get <laughs> to the topic. So, my uh, bad. so, so uh, parenting aside, since we are, uh, since we've blown the topic out of the water already, parenting aside, what are you, first of all, going to be drinking to, uh, to highlight our uh, discussion? Because I find that the distil- distilling the topic with distilled beverages has worked very well so far. So okay. uh, what are you going to be drinking? Well, I went with the old favorite brand of Maker's Mark, which is one of my favorites. I did step it up a little bit. Um, some This is batch number six, so a uh, private selection for the Goody Goody store in North Dallas. So uh, really, really unique. So uh, that's what I'll be having, Andy. Well, fantastic. It, it's a special bottle for a special occasion. I picked up, and I do confess, I did. I did try it on a different day beforehand. But I picked up a wonderful Glimmerangie, the La Santa, which is a twelve-year-old single malt Scotch that is uh, finally finished in uh, selected sherry casks after being originally aged in uh, American oak bourbon barrels. So I'm getting oh, okay. a, a whole lot of flavors here, and it's a wonderful flavor profile. And I figured I would pick a complex whiskey because we have picked a complex topic and uh, and one that will probably drive many people to drinking over the next few years, uh, oh, many yeah. years, yeah. because because how this episode came to be is Brian and I were just talking, right? Uh, like you do. Uh, and, and, and like so many of these episodes start, it, it was a conversation where we were uh, we were talking about the real world things that we are facing. And we're both parents. And so one of those real world things we're facing is, holy cow, how do we raise our kids in this like interconnected cyber bullying enabling different platforms that like, I don't wanna be on TikTok, but I guarantee my daughter does, et cetera, et cetera. Um, Content on demand, YouTube having everything from Sesame Street to, which is trademark, not mine, the from <laughs> Sesame Street all the way through to these weird, crazy, creepy right. uh, shows that, that introduce material that is just not okay. And that's what we're going to talk about today is sure. not the normal topic. We're going to talk about the concerns of the household and, and, and cybersecurity. So, yeah, that's, so, a, that's a big topic. I think it per- permeates uh, as a father. Um, and I haven't gotten too far into the detail of a wide range of age groups. Um, if I'm working on uh, corporate work stuff, I'm thinking about it. If I'm sitting at home in the media room, I'm thinking about uh, what my kids are getting into because it's everywhere. So, yeah. Well, and it's got implications going back to the office too, right? How many folks have gone home and opened up their work laptop and or their, their work issued phone or other device, any other device, and then the kids, especially if you have young kids in particular, but the kids need distraction and your other personal laptop or device is not available. Well, here you go. Unlock corporate device hand. Go to this website, play this game. Sure. Right. It happens all the time. Right. Not me. But this phone does not land in my kids' hands. It does not happen. Right. right. But, but there's a whole lot of other folks out there for whom that uh, immediate convenience and, and just shutting their kids up is more important. And that, I don't think that that's something that a lot of corporate security programs take into account. And it's not like you can say, don't ever, 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 and expect that to be real. So, right. so what do you do? Let's, let's, start, let's start 
at work and come home. So it's three o'clock on a Friday. It's not five o'clock on a Friday. And, and we're at work. And, and last night I let my kid play on my computer. I, I may have just brought something into the network. What's that look like for you? What are your thoughts? I'm just trying to start the conversation somewhere because it feels like there's uh, so many places that starting is the hard part with this conversation. Yeah, I mean, um, obviously that's, uh, you know, I think my thinking on security as it pertains to the house, uh, whether it's work devices or personal devices, is it, it's just like in a uh, corporate landscape, you're going to start with a policy, right? Um, I happen to have a policy at home like you, Andy, where my kids don't touch my devices. They don't, they don't check text on it. They don't touch it for a few minutes. Whereas my wife, on the other hand, uh, has her own policy, which includes handing over the phone all the time and, and doing some of the things you're talking about. And so, gosh, how, do, how is a corporate uh, leader in security, do you deal with that, with the, with the fact that you know your people are going to send that home? It's, I, who knows, Andy? I think it's partly education and it's also partly tools, tools on the back end to catch it when it, when it happens, because it's going to happen, right? So, yeah, in my household, uh, it's a lot easier for me to keep policy. My wife's got her own ideas on policy and she's a lawyer. So, uh, so she tends to win the argument. She, she, she's the general counsel of our household, if you will. There you go. Counsel, general counsel of the household. This is a good, this is going to be a good. <laughs> And the CFO and the CEO and, and all those I, things. So yeah, I I don't know what the corporate breakout would be of the division of labor in my house. I think I think I'm probably the CFO. Uh, we try to be co-CEO, uh, but my wife works in cybersecurity as well. So our uh, our approach to that kind of stuff might not be the same as every household, but our right. home discussions are exactly what you think they are. Well, I mean, it's it, I've never been a CISO, Andy, but got, I got to think managing your home uh, security policy is just as difficult because you're still dealing with personalities and you still have mm -hmm. to message that that program or plan in different ways enough for it to be effective, whether you want to or not, right? You've got your 10-year-old who might listen to you on and everything. They're easy to talk to, right? They, they fear dad still. Then you've got your 18-year-old who's like, okay, dad, sure, I won't use my... Uh, my doggie's pat that name is the password, whatever, dad. Sure. Yeah. You know, how do you really get to them? Right. And then what tools do you put behind them to, to stop when they mess up? Yeah. Cool story, bro. Right. That's what you get out. Bro. <laughs> I'm sure, dad. Exactly. It, it never happened to me. Right. Well, it never happens to anybody till the day it does. Exactly. I, I, you know, I, I think that's an, a great another place to start or, or to go next. We've already started. Sure. Uh, is is the it'll never happen to me syndrome is real across so many aspects of life. There's so many companies out there, even even large, very well known companies who right. haven't taken the necessary steps to really advance their security program because they haven't personally felt the pain yet, and 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 waiting 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 for a heart attack is not when you start running, right. Waiting for a ransomware attack is not when you start securing, even though there's a whole lot of people out there who don't get into good shape until they have a crisis. There's also a whole lot of people out there who don't get into good shape after they have a crisis. Same can be said of cybersecurity there. But when you're talking about the home and your kids yeah. and, 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 and maybe a spouse or, or, or relative, because, you know, you might who knows who all you live with sure. uh, out there in the general you. Uh, the, the, that's somebody else's problem that happens to other people, not me. I'm good. That's a big problem. How are you managing that? Well, I think anybody who's had a kid longer than 10 years and sometimes earlier, you, you figure out that that doesn't work. Something's always going to happen, right? I happen to have uh, a 23 year old now, 23 year old now, um, and then two teenagers. And so with the 23 year old, uh, relatively, we've we've gotten to, to this age in her life unscathed, but that doesn't mean we haven't had moments uh, where where the where the proverbial shit hit the fan, right? I, I think of one one instance where my sweet little girl, she might have been thirteen or fourteen, uh, never went cross with daddy once. Uh, for some reason, loses her phone. I think she's fifteen. Um, and cause we live, she's got a couple of affluent friends with quite a bit of devices on them. 
uh, one of them decided to uh, to let her bring up one of their secondary devices home. So my daughter's breaking the policy up in her room. And so, you know, you never think it's going to happen. Your little girl who's always followed the letter of the law, all of a sudden you find her in a room with another device that she shouldn't have had. So the contraband. Oh, yeah. the home yeah. equivalent of shadow IT. Yeah, exactly. It was an unmanaged device. I didn't have it. Didn't have anything on my APs tracking it. Yeah. So uh, she got through physical security. So we had to revamp policy for sure. <laughs> That's fantastic. <laughs> One one thing we did was we literally pulled her door off of her bedroom for about a week. So she got the message that that daddy's going to see whatever's going on in the house, no matter what. Yeah, so, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. As you do, with you, you, you were not the first parent to take a door off the hinges uh, with 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 my toddler because I have younger kids, right? I've got a three year old and a six year old. Oh yeah, and with oh, my wow. toddler. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I did career first and, and, and gray hair. And now I'm doing kids and they're just accelerating the gray hair. <laughs> you know, that's, that's what they do. My kids are wonderful. But my toddler, uh, she she refused to stay in bed and was like being destructive. Now, wow. you, any parent who any parent who thinks about it and whatnot knows that part of that behavior is just uh, a, a, a looking for attention. Right. But she can't have my attention at 1 a.m. when everybody's supposed to be sleeping if I've got a meeting at 6 a.m. the next morning. That's not going right. to happen. Right. So right. so for a while, we flipped her doorknob around to where it locked her in instead of locking us out. <laughs> so she got the message. Right. So the yeah. opposite of taking the door off the hinges. Fire code be damned. You know, just turn the turn it around. Yeah. Right. That kid, know. once she finally falls asleep, she's uh She's not going to uh, wake up for a fire. So we needed to be able to get in and not be gotcha. locked out anyway. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you got to get creative. And that's the thing. That's the other thing. So, uh, Andy, you and I are probably about the same age. We probably grew up at the beginning of things like AOL and, uh, you know, dial up modems and, um you know the era of myspace and the, we, we've seen the internet grow up really with us right whereas mm -hmm. our kids are you know the internet is the internet is mature messaging applications are easier to download and get access to so they're outpacing us from an intelligence perspective on a that's another challenge of being uh, uh keeping your your home safe is that your user base i.e your kids are eventually going to out intelligence you on the access they have to tools and some things like that. And so um, I think keeping that in mind keeps you on your toes a little bit. At least it does me. Absolutely. It, it absolutely does. But I, I again, I, I'm finding a trend here that every single thing we identify as, as a concern with our kids, I've seen in my professional career in the enterprise. Uh, sure. Which, which I wasn't, I'm not surprised by, but I wasn't expecting. I thought we were going to have a little more unique uh, concerns than in the house and with our kids than than uh, more broadly in the enterprise. So I want to talk about content next. Okay. Right? Yeah. And content content is a business decision. So I want to I want to get my opinion out on content controls first and see if where if you have a differing opinion. Sure. But there's a lot of older control catalogs that included content controls and content filters as cybersecurity controls. As the space has, has uh, matured, there's a lot of controls, catalogs and whatnot that have removed content tr controls, even though they are technical controls, from the list of cybersecurity controls because it's the, the content of a website and being able to get to any given website doesn't actually have as much bearing on security as it once did. There's other ways to flag this is a malicious website and stuff like that than content filter based approaches. And, right. and it's, it's like if you want to block Facebook and you want to keep people at your organization from using Facebook on the clock, well, one, you have to confiscate their phone at the door, too. Let's be real. Right. But, but two... Uh, that's a business decision because the relative risk of going to Facebook versus going to literally any other website is almost, I mean, it's no different, right? Any given yeah, place you yeah. go, you might as well just, just lock it down. If, if that's your goal, you might as well just lock it down to where you can only go to the business relevant websites. 
which some companies do do. Um, right. But but it's a it's a business control when it comes to content related filtering. Yeah. How do you feel? Well, I'll just go straight to the kid analogy, and I've se- I've seen the gamut of this because I you know I I have raised a twenty three year old girl as I said, so oh. she was um, you know her, I think from a content perspective, you know, for instance, early on with my little ones, I wasn't going to let them go see YouTube, right? Um, YouTube had a way to you know my their algorithm tended to take my kids to some really dark places early on. And so I said, we're just going to put YouTube on URL filtering, right? This is when the little ones were three and five years old, mm-hmm. um, which was probably in the, you know, 2013 <clears throat> time frame before schools were go, went full on iPad and cloud type learning, uh, you know, SaaS applications for elementary school stuff, which put my kids in about the third or fourth grade when they start using YouTube for school. So me as the home administrator, I have to open access to YouTube now. So I had to kind of, we had to change the policy, which meant if you're going to be online, you have to be in a common area, right? So then it becomes an eyeball type thing. Mom or dad is usually around. If they're looking at something weird, we're probably going to see or hear about it. So it's a layered strategy that way. Now um, they've got, you know, a laptop, an iPad, a phone. Um, unless I'm just running a draconian, you know, uh, plug all your things in, in my office every day, I, I'm just never going to keep up with them. So I, I just turn the internet off at 11 o'clock to, to the SSIDs they use. <laughs> yeah. So that, that'll wow. work for a little while, but then, but then they'll keep getting older and better. So it's just a moving policy. Yeah. But content's tough because they need it, uh, for school and to get their, like, like your users getting their jobs done. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I use Google and, and lots of different websites all over the place every day, as I'm sure you do, to find the information I need for, for internal business, for external clients, for, for just reminding myself what I'm thinking sometimes. Sure. Like, what was that word? I can't remember. Google right. knows that word, right? So I think I have slightly different controls on mine. But a right. similar a similar overarching philosophy, and I've already I've already accepted because of my I think it's because of my exposure to uh, to everything I see on a daily basis, and 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 seeing the abject failures of content based blocking approaches. Right, right. I I've, I've gone to uh, well like YouTube for example. They're logged in on my account in YouTube so that I can at a minimum see their history and set some standards. YouTube okay. now has a kids app too that that allows for curation, yeah. Yeah. right? But there's also there's also things like Netflix and uh, and Disney and Hulu and and I don't want to just be picking the what there, there's a, a whole bunch of them, right? There's a whole bunch of services and me right. being able to list them off the top of my head, Amazon, right, is no indication of which one's better, but they all have very inconsistent. Uh, controls. So Netflix, um, Netflix will show a different type of content and allows you to have a kid account. Uh, Disney has a kid account where, uh, where they can't easily bounce out. It requires a pin and stuff like that. So now I'm having to to practice uh, hygiene because it's on my TV, right? So I'm having to practice password hygiene and make everybody leave the room to put in the password to get to the adult account. Oh no! Because no. because it shows you on the screen what what's being typed. Right, right, right. I'm like, come on, guys! At least star the thing out. Yeah, send it to my phone or something. Something, right? Uh, but they but they don't. And well, and and sending to the phone. So this is this. I'm glad you said that because this is one of the the principal challenges of um, of shared services, right? How do you make sure that the shared service is being used in a proper way? Because it does not make sense to have four separate, distinct Netflix accounts. And we're just going to use Netflix as our straw man for all video, right? right. I'm not paying right. for Netflix four times just so I can have four separate logins that I can then multi-factor or whatever, right? right? And, and in business, too, there are lots of places where there is still a valid business case for shared services, but that requires shared credentials or some other access mechanism. Now, if it's a shared service that can just be auto logged in, 
and that use within the confines of the shared service uh, mm -hmm. doesn't have security implications for, for the use, then cool. But at some point, I'm seeing a future scenario where my kids are using YouTube, which is their favorite app, on my TV, which is their favorite place because it's a giant screen. And down the road, I'm going to go into and do my, one of my periodic audits, and I'm going to see something. I'm going to be like, who watched that? Which one of you watched that? And they're going to be like, oh, and point at each other. And one of them is going to be telling the truth, and one of them is going to be a dirty little lighter. And, and I won't have a way of knowing because it's a shared service. Yeah, yeah. So you do audit tracing. It's kind of like, the, it's, it's what I use for my uh, uh, home alarm system. My wife laughs all the time. Why do we all have separate codes? Mm -hmm. and, you know, because on the day something goes wrong, I need to know who's, who gave their code to Billy down the street or, or even worse, right? So right. yeah, audit trail, right? So absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, it matters. And having having multiple, like I've got a driveway alarm and I've got cameras and I've, you know, right. I've got all the things. And and no, I don't have I don't have one of those very popular brand cameras that goes over your doorbell either because I'm not sharing my data with all those guys. I've I've got I've got my cameras on my network, which can gotcha. be ac accessed elsewhere, but you know. So so yeah, it's it's uh trust but verify and and trust but verify requires um forethought how are you going to verify right so sure. what, what's uh what's the what's the biggest digital challenge you have faced with your kids uh when they were not not your 23 year old or maybe mm -hmm. but what's what's the biggest digital challenge you have faced i mean it changes all the time i think um you know when when my oldest was in middle school that was a big rash of uh, nudies getting out on the internet. The kids were doing it as as a fun thing. So having those conversations, whether which is where it all starts, right? About really what the world or implications implications of that, and and you know finding out that her, and her one of her really good friends has done it, and that she was thinking about doing it. So those are the hardest ones, right? Because it's more right. of a it's more of a parenting and life conversation than it is technology. But obviously, the digital is driving. Uh, you know, these new conversations, whereas, you know, you could be local to your, you know, you know, little house on the prairie church building out there back in the day, but these days you're, they're connected everywhere. Um, you know, I think right now my son is getting, you know, it's the first time I've had a, uh, a teenage boy in the house, right? And so the access to hit the content he can get a hold of now haven't, hasn't seen that challenge present itself. Um, but I'm ready for it, right? I'm checking logs and I'm talking to him about, you know, the the pitfalls of, of really bad content. We haven't seen anything bad yet, um, but I'm keeping my eye out. Um, I, I guess that's that's it so far. I, I haven't had anything to, you know, knock on wood, uh, you know, digital 9-11 at, at the household. We've, I've been luckily with having a layered security strategy that nothing's got out and I haven't had any kids. Uh, you know, do anything too funky, but uh, I've been watching them pretty closely. So, um, yeah, probably closer than most. Probably, probably. I've been with in technology for a while and around physical security and and otherwise. And so, um, yeah, yeah, definitely. Always had a policy of uh, of doing you know anything on the internet uh, when I could out in the open. I think that was big. You know, knowing the pitfalls of it, and so. Um, yeah, I've kept a close eye on it, but it changes all the time. I mean, Snapchat, you know, I will say now that you mention it, Andy, we, we, I don't know why I didn't think about this, but so I mentioned my, my 13 year old and he, uh, you know, as with a lot of 13 year olds, he brought up the phone conversation recently, about three <laughs> months ago. Hey, when am I going to get a phone? Uh, a lot of kids at his school, you know, were seven or eight had a phone. And so, um, I've always thought the, the later, the better. Uh, but he, he's getting to that age where he's got football practice and music practice. And so I thought, well, you know, uh, there's an argument to be made. He could use one. Decided to use it as a learning as, or as kind of a test, right? Said, okay, I'll, I'll get you a phone, but uh, you only can have the phone, the messaging, and the map app, uh, map app on it. 
Um, well, but dad, I want all these games. And I said, son, <laughs> you just need a phone. Show me you can take care of that in six months. We'll talk about it. Well, it took them all of about three weeks to download apps on the phone. And so we immediately took it back and he lost it for a month. He got it back and, and then he messed up again. So he's actually been without a phone now for, uh, he, he's got, he went for about a three month stint with the phone currently doesn't have it to kind of show him the value of, of earning that privilege. And so um, I would guess technically that's the biggest challenge we've had, but we currently think we've got our, got our hands on it a little bit. You know what? All you did was enforce the policy when it was violated. He's lucky he yeah. didn't get fired. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I think that was the talk mom had with him. I said, son, go to your room. You just, just don't talk back at this point. You, you don't want to get fired at this moment. But uh, yeah, it's been really interesting because, you know, he he's uh, he's grown up with a lot of nice things. And so I'm wondering, why can't you get this, dude? And you want your phone. I want you to have a phone. But I can't just tell you something and you go the exact opposite way that's just not how it works nope. so nope that's uh there's there's just no trust left and you got it takes a while to earn that back you got to give yeah. me the confidence that i need yeah and in a couple of years he'll be asking for the keys to a much bigger phone uh, one that's dangerous and that can go 70 miles an hour down the highway so it's 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 good to build trust now start now that's absolutely right so you said something that that resonated with me and it's something that is key in 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 the home and in the rest of our life uh, at, at work. But it's it's the communication part, right? Communicating what is expected, communicating the policies, communicating the um, the the things to be aware of, right? Communicating the necessary information for awareness. And I wanted to share a quick anecdote about my kid, my six year old. Um, I apparently, cause talking to him, you got to talk, you got to talk, got to talk, which is what brought this story to mind. So I apparently have been doing either a good job or too much of a good job talking to my kid about, uh, what to do and what not to do, because, uh, I, I said her name, I said, child number one, she goes, <laughs> yes. And I said, child number one, cause I like to come back to her and and she's like, okay, fine. I know. Don't do drugs. That's what she said to me. And I'm like, oh, I guess that one has sunk in. <laughs> I was, I, I was going to ask you if you wanted ice cream, but, uh, <laughs> but your answer earns you ice cream. Let's do this. There you go. Yeah. yeah repetition works. It works. Yeah. Cause she's, she just said, it's very hard for me not to say her name, but I don't want her name all over the internet. I got, I got you. Right? Yeah. So she, but she did, that was her response. She goes, I know. Don't do drugs. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's good. Repetition works. Yeah. Yeah. So sometimes. Yeah. Go ahead. Well, I was going to say sometimes with my son, apparently repetition and, and some action hopefully will work. Uh, mm -hmm. so, so we'll see, you know, but, uh, but he's a little hard headed like his dad. And I think, I think at the end of the day, Andy, I think, um, you know, I use a pretty advanced uh, URL filter on my APs. Like I told you, I, I turn off the internet at 11 just to be sure they didn't sneak a device up. They're going to bed either way. Um, you know, do some URL filtering. But really what it boils down to is communication um, and, and being that type of parent they can talk to because they're going to get around whatever defense you have, uh, whether it's going to their buddy's house and for the sleepover and there are no guards on his his environment, et cetera. So. At the end of the day, I try to parent as best I can to uh, to the point to where I'm not around and they're making the right decisions. But, uh, you know, but as as we said earlier, uh, you know, being ready, right, having my uh, no pun intended incident response plan uh, ready to go for a contained blast and uh, and being sure I can get them out of hot water as quickly as possible while teaching them a lesson. So yeah. knock on wood, I've been lucky so far. Have you ever run the equivalent of a home-based fishing exercise against your kids? <laughs> I don't think I've done anything official in digital, you know, fishing from the perspective of knocking on the front door, seeing if they'll answer the door for somebody. I've done that, but not an actual okay. fishing uh, email. No, I don't, I don't mean email. The, the, the knocking on the door thing okay. was, was okay. exactly what I was after, that kind of thing, because because yeah. Uh, yeah. I wanted to see if you had if you had done any any testing. A little bit here or there. 
Um, and usually when it's with my wife fails a test, she doesn't care. It's like, okay, whatever. <laughs> You'll figure it out. She's, she's, the, she's my worst user. Uh, maybe, maybe that's an analogy to executives, you know, how yeah, I was like say, you, call, things, right? you said she was the CEO. It sounds like she's acting she like is. one. There's she's a lot of times, a lot of times I would say, and this is no slide on CEOs. Uh, CEOs are, are very busy people. They are often laser focused on the things they are supposed to be focused on. And, and it is a, they're a quintessentially distracted user. Right. And that distraction leads to a lack of focus on, you know, the, the security things that require their input or their attention to be successful. And they're a, a perfect example of, of the type of user that every realistic reality-based security program has to plan for and around. And it sounds like, uh, yet again, just a parallel to real life, uh, the the executive of the house is also distracted and laser focused on, you know, keeping the kids alive. Yeah. And unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on how you look at it, the CISO can, or CEO can learn their lesson. Uh, in the case of my wife, uh, early on, she she didn't think URL filtering was necessary until uh, one day she saw some really interesting things on my son's iPad. And she said, maybe that URL filtering thing is is good for that SSID they're on. So uh, she, she's yeah. a CEO who had a, had a lesson learned for sure. Yeah, well, availing yourself of the data you have and making data-driven decisions about policy changes is just good practice. Absolutely. 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 <laughs> Cheers on that one. Yeah, for sure. It's good stuff. Mm hmm. So how is that um, that small batch? It's very good. Um, it tastes like a uh, little bit more uh, brooding, for lack of a better, better way to put it, makers. Uh, definitely thicker, a little more syrupy. Um, it's good, though. I think it feel good, too. Brooding is a great tasting note. Like, I don't okay. know what brooding tastes like, but I feel like it's I do just, just, just by that description. Over you. Yeah, it's just, you know, it's that big guy that's kind of in the elevator next to you, and you're like, oh, gosh, come on. He's, he's just overbearing. Yeah, oh, man. I'm feeling with this thing right now. Yeah, you know, I don't have real narrow shoulders, and I'm not generally a skinny guy to begin with. The worst flight I ever took. I was in the back row on a flight from Houston to Las Vegas between two Samoan guys who both were, uh, they were traveling as part of a big group for sufferers of rheumatoid arthritis. And so I was stuck between two guys who could barely move. So they couldn't lean over or anything like that going, Ugh, and then the air conditioner went out. <laughs> so we're all three stuck together what's that how long the flight was this two hours two and a half hours Oof. yeah Ouch. yeah so we were all and it was august oh yeah so no no fun at all and it's just a uh, good example of what happens when you wait till the last second to plan something because that's how you get stuck in the middle seat yeah Absolutely. Planning yeah. is bad. Yeah. Or planning. Not planning is bad. Not planning is bad. Yeah, exactly. Have another drink. Yeah, have another drink. So we've covered a lot of ground. There's still so much more ground to cover with kids. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So you mentioned you mentioned the the scenario of they're at somebody else's house, somebody else's yeah. network, stuff like that. So Communication awareness wise, what steps are you are you taking? Because I, I know what I'm doing and I, I'll, I'll share next, but I don't want to pre-color you. Yeah. What steps are you taking or, or how should how should parents who maybe aren't as tech savvy as you and I, how should they be approaching that discussion? Because many parents, just like just like you in, in, in context of your son, they want their kid to have the phone to be able to call if there's an emergency. Right. We live in a we live in an era where that's possible. So why wouldn't you? You want them to have the phone. They have the phone. They're on somebody else's network. Uh, all all that kind of stuff. How are you communicating? Because this is one of those places where awareness is the strongest control in the in the enterprise. When folks are 
working at Starbucks, awareness is still the strongest control. How are yeah, you building yeah. that awareness? What, what approach are you taking with your kids? Well, uh, you know, first off, it's it, it all has to do with open communication as a as a as a principle within the household, right? In other words, hey, you're a smart kid, you're a great person, you're 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 an amazing son or daughter, and one day you're going to be a world changing uh, member of society. But until then, I'm your parent, and I need to have access to everything in your life, and I'm going to give you advice about things. And until you're off on your own, in other words, paying your own set of bills, you know, that's the, that's the deal, right? And so I start that with all my kids very young, right? And so I think that permeates everything we do, whether it's digital or riding your bike or swimming or going to school or playing sports, you know, it's, it's all an open communication. And so as it pertains to digital, there's some, some practical rules that follow that, right? I, I always have access to what's on your phone or your device. No matter what, at any random time, I can see what's going on there. So open communication. As long as I have any dollar or penny in paying for that device, it's my device and I have access to it. So, you know, um, what that obviously leads to is, you know, spot checks. Kid comes back from a from a late night thing and say, hey, I, I don't have to do it a lot, Andy. Um, it's more of the specter that it's there. Early on, I'll do it with them or, you know, in my in my daughter's case, and I usually get the message and then it becomes pretty easy to deal with. So I think open communication that way. Also, trust is earned, not given. Right. Hey, I'll always love you. You're my child. You know, all that stuff. But that trust and love are two different things. And so like the situation with my son and his phone, um, it's not a question of whether we can ha get him a phone or the need for the phone. It's more of um, earning my trust through this device, through this relationship with, with technology and how it fits into our system, not necessarily the other way around, right? And so I, it's always got to be about trust and me, him, him earning our trust and, and my earning our trust. And the more they do that, the more freedom they get, right? To go spend the night at places, to go overnight, to take a few day trip as he gets older, you know, and then eventually he'll get to the point where he doesn't need my trust, but he's earned it and, and he's doing his thing in theory. Right. So I guess they're more broad um, parenting um, principles that kind of bleed through and the digital kind of complements more than anything. Right. To rely on. Um, I don't really use my, you know, Apple filters on on devices and things like that. I more use the uh, hey, give me your phone filter uh, and let, let dad look what you're doing on there. But uh you know, the, the, the only the big fallacy with that or the big weakness, I guess, is when new apps that maybe do the wiping like the Snapchat and stuff come around that the kids know about before me or there's some of that stuff. Right. So luckily I'm in technology, so I stay pretty close to that. But, you know, like I tell my kids all the time, one day they'll be smarter than me. Not today, but one day they will. Definitely. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, that's all we want for them. We want them to be better than us every time. Right. Sure, sure. But I'm certainly not going to give it to them, right? I beat them at putt-putt and chess and every time we do anything like that because they're going to have to earn it. <laughs> that's right. That's right. My, uh, I, I don't think I've taken my daughter putt-putt golfing. I need to do that. Unfortunately, it's, kind of a, it's like see, 108 outside. It is tough, but you know, it, it, this can be a fall thing, but see, here's a problem. I used to, I used to get really competitive playing putt-putt golf because I was pretty good at it. These days, I'm, I haven't been putt-putt golfing for a long time because my friends quit playing with me. Oh, gosh. Were they, were like, good. they were like, I don't, I don't want to play putt-putt golf with you, Andy. Ouch. Yeah. I was like, oh. That's sad. That's not, I, That's I was. Sad I, was story. I was devastated. And I miss putt-putt. And you've just reminded me that I need to go take my daughter to putt-putt and, and uh, you know, just wreck her. <laughs> I was going to say, were you pretty tough on your friends when you beat them at putt-putt? Is that why they don't want to play anymore? Did you like dance up, dance around and do uh, only if they know, victory did. things? <laughs> only if they did. Yeah, like, you can nice play when they're whooping their butt. Yeah, two, two can play at that game, you know. Uh, yeah, I, I, I did go over the top once because, because they started it. But, uh, but that was not when they quit playing with me. You need to start an Andy Bednett uh, mini golf invitational uh, and mm. donate, you know, donate the charity, donate. The, I, the I'm writing that down. Yeah. 
Andy Bennett mini golf invitational in support of Crohn's or whatever, right? Some nice charity. SBCA. Oh, we're doing this. And, and you're and you're getting an invite. I don't I don't have so here's the other thing is I don't mind losing. Okay. It's fine. Like I can lose at any sport, any game. What as long as everybody's being a good sport, I'm a good sport too. But but if you're not, I'm not. No, no. You're, no. Gonna, you're gonna let it go. Yeah, yeah. No, we'll 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 turn it off and turn it up to 10. Is that Maybe a bombable? Is that an abominable snowman behind you? That is an abominable snowman. Nice, nice. My wife I, has a cousin that looks just like him. <laughs> That's fantastic. <laughs> so, my, yeah, my office is full of interesting stuff, right? It, and it's stuff yeah. like, there's my shark. I see it. I see it. Yeah. Hiding right behind your shoulder. Right behind my shoulder. What's so, that you must know, up there? Is that a lion? That, or? that is Poseidon. Oh, okay. Yeah. So my, yeah, the office is full of, of interesting things. So this was from my students at the university. This is from a project with uh, A&M. This is a, the, the, uh, oh, and when I'm pointing, I, I, I'm bad at this, right? The podcast medium requires sound. Uh, so up here, I've got a bust of Poseidon that my students gave me down here. I've got a coffee cup from a project uh, at A&M university. This is like one of those fantasy knife things I don't even know how to describe this to the audience uh, that my brother got me for my birthday a long time ago. Uh, these football pads are specifically from a project we did where we were building sensors in to help detect and do performance management to enable athletes to understand uh, both how well they're performing and when their performance started to drop when they're, we, we had temperature sensors and all that kind of stuff in there. When their performance started to drop, to know that it was time to take them off the field, get their hands into the ice, cool them down or whatever, so that they could come back and perform at peak. It was a lot of fun. Uh, okay. This right here is a digital microscope up over my other shoulder that was used for my graduate thesis a long, long time ago, which was breaking biometrics with stuff I bought at Walmart. And I had to be able to get in and understand the structure of the, of the fingerprint sensor, because uh, I didn't understand it, to, uh, to figure out how to beat it. Very cool. Yeah, you know, I Very used to do cool. tech. I used to do tech stuff. <laughs> now you're just talking about keeping kids under the under the lock and key of their parents. Yeah, exactly. Well, and 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 but keeping kids safe, right? And the entire the entire profession is about enabling people to still do the things they need to do while keeping them and the household or the business safe. It it's a very different world, and it continues to change. And there's no. Uh, there's, just like any time, you know, when, when my parents were raising me in the 80s and 90s, there was a whole different bag and my kids are going to have a different bag. I can only imagine the robot issues that they're going to be dealing with, whatever that means, right? Um, you know, how that relates to raising kids and, you know, the robot housekeeper and uh, whatever. You, you, you can go on forever with there it's going to be. But, I, but yeah, it, it all starts with uh, communication and also, that whole thing about uh, a village, right? Uh, we have a good, we have good, good communication with my parents or with my kids' circle of friends as parents, right? Um, knowing who they are, what they're like, and you know, having open communication to them, right? Uh, when my kids go over there to hang out, and who, you know, where are they going to be? And is there an adult in the room? And some things like that. So, there's no silver bullets, as they say. So I've been, I've been taking notes as we go. And I do this for, for every episode to figure out uh, which things I want to circle back to or which things I need to think about in my own personal use later yeah. or, or whatnot. So something that I think might be very useful to especially the non-security folks who might find this in the future, the folks yeah. who may be less technically savvy, what tools, what tech stack are you using in your house to control do your filtering, set up multiple SSIDs, all that kind of stuff. What, what's your tech stack look like and how, how might people implement similar levels of control in their environments that you've got? Well, so I, um, I'm a little unique because I worked at, uh, at the Cisco for a while. So I got a set of Meraki switches and APs running in my home and, and they're, they're commercial grade. Um, 
but I think they're reasonably priced. And for what I do with them, I, I, you know, you have to buy a license. They're a little bit differently than, than your typical commercial stuff. Now I haven't um, shopped at the best buys of the world, but I, I can only imagine that there's some pretty robust solutions now uh, that do things like it's not, it's not rocket science. It's URL filtering uh, that do multiple SSIDs. Right. So I can have, you know, one with mom and dad and can go to any website they want and another one that has certain restrictions on it. So I'm sure there's, you know, uh, products you can find at, at Best Buy that, that kind of do those things. I run a few different APs, the 3,500 square foot home. And so run kind of a mesh network to get best access I can. Um, and that's, that's really at the core of it right there. I don't, I, I, I use some, uh, some, some firewalling on the device as well as I use, um, I like, I'll, I'll call them out. Vivid, uh, does a really good, uh, home alarm system that connects to, uh, my apps. Obviously I use two-factor authentication on every application, right? So somebody can't get access to my video camera. Um, I think layered security is important, um, when it comes to anything, it's even your home. Um, so obviously I have dogs. Uh, I don't use internet locks on my, on my front doors or back doors. I only use, you know, the typical key one, but with layered digital on top of it, right? The alarm system and the cameras. Um, but I try to mix it up with different kind of layered strategies that way. Um, a lot of lighting around the home, and especially around my kids' windows in case they want to sneak in or out. Um, and cameras. You need to make sure they don't fall, right? You need light. Yeah, yeah. If they fall, that's on them. But uh, really, I just don't, don't want anybody getting in or getting out and running up my insurance liability. So, um, <laughs> um, yeah. And then, and then at the end of the day, it takes somebody, you know, managing it where I'm changing passwords and and being sure that they're following all the rules and that mom isn't helping them circumvent the policy somehow uh, because she's too lazy to. <laughs> you know, help them get onto the right SSID. So it takes, just like with any security program, it takes periodic check-ins and uh, compliance audits here or there, which I also do, by the way. It wouldn't be the first time I've seen a CEO tell their assistant, which is how I'm classifying the kids. Oh, here, right. just use mine. Sure, yeah. It was the kids, kids being malicious insiders, having all sorts of... Uh, alternative motives when they get a hold of that iPad, right? Oh, now I'm going to go yeah. do this. And if I can share this password with this other device. Here you go, mom. Thanks. Abs yeah. Absolutely. That's, absolutely. That's, that's the thing. Your, your users in the home game are always, they're, they're just working daily to get ahead of you, right? And their level of intelligence around these things is going up exponentially versus yours. Which is the same everywhere, right? That's that you have the same <laughs> similar experience. <laughs> everywhere shadow it is always trying to circumvent the controls to do the thing they want the way they want right right so i want to i want to jump back to internet yeah. locks that's internet something what? internet locks and internet cameras we can throw those in there but a while back yeah. there was a um, a trend a move if you will amazon during the pandemic was looking for every possible way to increase sales. And Amazon did phenomenally well through the pandemic in terms of uh, people were stuck at home. So they were just ordering stuff from Amazon. I am still disposing of pandemic Amazon boxes because I never had enough room to get rid of them. Right. right. Like in the trash can or whatever. So just stacks of boxes and, and, uh, and whatnot. So one of the things that they did that I just can't believe people were okay with is they sold and still sell, I believe, um, the the Amazon front door lock, where the Amazon yeah, driver, yeah, yeah. to yeah. avoid package theft ostensibly, but where the Amazon driver was able to come up and go bleep and let themselves into your house so that right. they could then set the package inside your house. Right, right. Your, your house. <laughs> let me rephrase re, 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 Iterate. I can't even talk. I remember straight. that idea. Did they ever get that off the ground? I, I remember that asinine idea. That's it's it's happening. Well, yeah. on my garage, I get an ad constantly because apparently they're they've got some uh, alliance partnership with Amazon. It's very similar where I could you know, they could come up to the garage and open the garage that way uh, by clicking a button. So yeah, yeah it oh, it's yeah terrifying. Like, why would you ever? 
consent to let a stranger into your house unsupervised in a way that you have no control over. You know, I'm also not putting internal inside the house facing cameras. Like what happens in the house? Like, I don't want my, I, I have nothing but women in my house. I don't want them being subjected or me to that matter. It's where, not, do you, where do you sit on Roomba devices in your home? I don't have a Roomba, but I used to have a Roomba. And, and so Roomba, your strategy of segmenting the network. Yeah. So my, that was where I segmented my network and, and, and where I give the advice. Uh, I get asked to talk about IOT devices in the house a lot uh, right. and, and in the enterprise. And um, I get invited for cybersecurity awareness month in particular, I get invited in to talk about IOT and, and how people can manage it in their personal lives. And mm-hmm. Roombas always come up and, and segmentation is key. Putting them on, especially if you bought an off-brand Roomba, right? If you're buying yeah. a real iRobot Roomba with, with a traceable supply chain and, and you know, good old fashioned US jurisdiction on, on the final manufacturer and delivery where you could actually right. take action if, it's, if they uh, are implicated in stealing your information. But the guys who were buying these $100 knockoffs uh, from from the mainland china that were those things are are a hundred dollars because that's not you're not paying for that device with money you're paying for the shipping and then they're shipping all of your data back from whatever network you put it on yeah so so segmentation is how how i handle things like Roombas. right well while china's mapping out your home at least it's a segmented network where it's only getting through there yeah (laughs) Well, so so I was more concerned about the digital because mapping out a home, uh, if you've ever sold your home in the last 10 years, your your pictures and floor plan have already been exposed to the Internet and scraped off of every sure. real estate website. So so protecting data that's already been made public ostensibly by you by by using modern practices to sell your home uh, is less of a concern for me than them mapping my digital footprint in my home. I don't want gotcha. them being able to get into to scrape credentials to my business accounts, whether it's my personal banking or my or my work email or whatever else, uh, right. I, that's what I'm concerned about. Gotcha, gotcha. So you were asking about internet locks. Yeah, so got got onto the Roomba. Yeah, so what's yeah. your question? My, well, I, I think I soapboxed already, but my question is like, and and you and you followed it up with the garage thing, but like. That's the level of awareness we're facing where people are literally, they care so little for the personal protection and privacy issues implicated. How do we combat that? Oh, gosh, that's the question of the, the, the billion dollar question, whether it becomes whether it's for enterprise security or, or secu- you know, having the general populace secure their homes in a better way. Oh, uh, just, just local education is the only thing I can think of, Andy. And what I mean by that is uh, telling my kids, telling my wife, you know, managing it locally and protecting myself as much as possible and anybody that will listen to me. How do we get everybody else to hear that? Gosh, I don't know. I mean, maybe I, I kind of think that I live in a vacuum and, and being in cybersecurity and, and maybe I'm just in this dream world where it matters because I don't know, that's. You know, I guess that's why they pay us the big bucks, right? Um, we have to figure out how to convince people that that waiting till the moment of the boom is is probably the the not the not the best plan. Um, and it's the same thing with your home networks, right? And 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 protecting your your digital assets at home. You know, planning for it and having a layered strategy and you know keeping up with it and and checking that alarm when it goes off and not just assuming that it's nothing you know and 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 all those things how do you teach the populace that Ugh, i don't know i'm only one man andy yeah but we got to we got to build more more homestead champions i'm going to write that down homestead champions homestead champions maybe you make like a show like a reality show like a you know uh digital security cribs Right. You come to somebody's house and they show you all their cool, you know, that would be hilarious. You, you would be my first episode since I know what you've got. It would be really yeah. boring. You'd go to a cabinet and say, here's the blinky light. But you'd see my dog with a really thick bark that you would see that she's not going to bite anybody. What, what's uh, that? What's that horn? Burr, 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 that, that they always <laughs> go so zoom, zoom in on the dog and then go. Shh, 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 right. Uh, yeah. 
Yeah, I don't, I don't know. That that would be fun, ridiculous, but fun. And you could do it as a parody. Uh, but the more people who hear about the fact that you can control your personal network and, and your information, the better. Um, the I've heard I've heard a lot of ideas about how we drive this behavior home, uh, literally home. Right. right. Uh, have you ever worked for an organization that provided uh, cybersecurity awareness training that was also available to your family? I want to say that Cisco did only because they offered so many different um, employee benefits, um, but obviously not enough to where I took advantage of it. Um, that's not a bad idea. Yeah, you know, more of a kind of a personal family uh, cybersecurity. I, I, I won't say that I have. I didn't. I didn't know of anything certainly at, at any of my previous employers that had anything like that. But it's a great idea. I've seen it at just a couple places where, and, and I've heard it talked about more places, but I haven't seen it done many. And, and in all frankness, we, we don't do it here at Apollo and maybe we should um, to, to create those homestead champions and make sure now, you know, we are a company full of people like you and me who, who understand these implications and do, and, and half the company are, are, is just the type of people who are tinkerers who are going to build out the same kind of tech stack you have at home just because they can. But well, I think if, yeah, I think if, if, if you believe in the power of remote work and the productivity gains from all that, then that's the, that's, that's the obvious uh, next step is, um, you know, securing that, that data, that IP, that, that employees work out where he's at. It takes um, because the people that live with them have access to their lives. Um, if you're really going to be secure, you know, security awareness starts with them, right? Um, if somebody's got it, wants to really get a hold of some IP um, in that scenario, they could dress up like UPS guy and drop off a laptop that's supposedly from XYZ company. And if the family receiving those packages isn't at least a little bit aware of what's going on, it, it could it could turn into a real issue for a company. So yeah, it, there's an ROI behind it for sure. <clears throat> So uh, lightning round, I just came up with. Oh, okay. I'll go, and I'll uh, go first. I'm, I'm two in. I'm two in. So uh, you're going to get I'll what go, you get. Is that I'll go you wait first. To do it? Yes. I'll go first. Okay, when, does go. A jo- when does a joke become a dad joke? Uh, I think I've heard this one. Uh, after, the, after the first kid. I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> when the punchline becomes apparent. Okay. Yeah. 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 No. No. Fair. What do I? What do I have to do? Dad joke it. Oh God. This is the parenting episode. The parenting episode. I. Uh, I don't have a good one off the top of my head. Oh no. Yeah. Yeah. I come oh, up with no. them on the fly. They have to be organic. They do yeah. generally. So the only reason yeah. I have the only reason oh. I have one ready to go is because my brother hit my brother hit me with that last night. So let me give you a couple more here. Uh, what okay. do you call what do you call a one-legged hippo? Uh, I don't know. What do you call it? A hoppo. A hop. <laughs> I what don't do know if call- it's the whiskey or if these are actually funny. I think it's the whiskey. What's the name of that knight that just ran away? Uh, I don't know. Runaway. Surrender. <laughs> Surrender. <laughs> you're welcome and i'm these sorry good surrender all right those are good i'm gonna have to write those down there you go there you go so there there's just so much to cover and this topic yeah. matters to me because my kids matter to me and all yeah. the kids matter to me and i also every every single home that my information ends up in and apollo is a remote first company yeah, every single home that that our information ends up in matters to me too, whether there's kids there or not. And so, how to how to push security best practices down to the bottom across the country is is top of mind for me. So when you agreed to do this podcast, I was uh, very excited because it it matters. Yeah, and but there's no good solution yet. No, I think my hope is that as the generation, you know, younger than us, Andy, live more and more with this on a, a more ingrained to their lives than ever before. And I think it will continue to be um, that they'll respect it a little more 
that way I think we've kind of just let it let it grow un, unchecked for so long that you and I both see uh, as good as the internet has been for society there's plenty of bad that it's brought with it uh, so it, it does take a controlled uh, approach to it and so we we didn't even get into the um, the conversations around you know how to make the internet most productive for your life and, and the mental health around it right which is a security issue in my in my mind in other words sure you know, I tell my kids, you know, we've got a long term joke, uh, you know, that we just kind of flip off. And hopefully they're getting the message. But one of them says something completely off the wall at dinner. And I go, you must have read that on the Internet, didn't you, son? Because they all know that nothing, you know, everything should be vetted that comes off the Internet. Right. And the truth versus, uh, you know, what's not true. And so that's a whole other discussion. You know, how do you teach? The next generation to be cognizant of, of media and the validity of it and why that's important to a functioning society so well critical that's thinking. all for the next one yeah Criti yeah absolutely critical thinking is is a discussion all of itself possibly a completely different podcast yeah. right? I, I don't yeah. even know Crit critical thinking is a super super important f all too rare skill that we absolutely yeah. need to need to bring back it's okay to have a thought but you need to run that thought through. You need to think it through. Think about the implications. And the same goes with your actions on the internet, right? Now, I don't think that necessarily um, control, like third-party control that takes accountability out of the hands of the individual user is in line with the, the internet that I grew up with and, and, and believe in, in terms of a medium for the free flow of ideas and, and to support, uh, well, to support nothing short of, of what's needed for democracy but it it can be and is often uh what's the word tainted it can be tainted really easily right. and lots of large media platforms especially social media platforms thrive on that innate ability for bad information to travel faster than proper information bad stories are get more attention yeah, yeah, I think that's it's psychology versus uh, you know versus ethics, right? Because um, there's a there's a thread in us as animals that that we see a car accident or a, or a grizzly situation and our eyes are drawn to look at it, right? Um, whereas if we see puppies in a box playing in a, in a nice summer's meadow, um, it might not be that interesting. It's kind of boring, right? And that's just psychology. And unfortunately, the uh, the media companies figure that out and, and then, uh, you know, will post whatever they feel uh, is OK to post. Right. With the truth be damned. And so how do us as uh, I think I think parents not only have the security thing to worry about, but also teaching kids how to digest uh, this new medium on a health in a healthy way. And that's a that's to me, that's an even bigger issue uh, that we're dealing with right there. Um, so for the next one, maybe. May maybe absolutely. So, I'm I'm looking through my notes here, and we've covered a lot yeah. of topics. We've yeah. covered a lot of topics, and and something that we didn't cover that uh, I think both of us mentioned at least once is the future, which is the scariest possible part here because yeah. I don't know. But what do you think? What do you think the the one, five, and 10 year future of cybersecurity as relevant to the home and kids and home life and the merging of, uh, of Enterprise America with, with the homestead. What, what, put a stake in the ground on something. What's, yeah, I think, what's next? I don't think it'll be too crazily different in one year. I think we're still in the same similar place. I think, um, you know, not to make this an economic discussion, but I don't see a ton of innovation that way during a recession. I think it's now five years. Um, I think we're going to see a lot of conversations around uh, things like Tesla and uh, uh, what Elon Musk is doing with Neuralink and its impact on society and um, how we're using it for for medicine, but also the, there'll be a recreation conversation. And of course, obviously that'll lead to kids at some point. So that's probably five to 10 years from now. Um, and the value, I think the value of uh, social interaction for human beings is gonna be put to a big um, test over the next five years, because the more, almost all technology is going inward, right? Um, whether it's Meta, 
whether it's uh, virtual reality, whether it's real, reality augmentation. And so I think the weakness developing in the human beings is the ability to connect, um, you know, on a deeper level, which, which is where collaboration and, and bigger projects come from as a society. So that'll be a big challenge while we're continuing to invest in technologies as parents and, and that, that almost make islands of human consciousness. How do we stay close? And once again, I think it is this one parent over here in Flower Mound, Texas thinks it really all starts at home and, and having communication and conversations with your kids, you know, no matter the, the technology and having them come go that way on their own. We'll see if I do that. Uh, you know, I'm still in the middle of it, but that's the plan for now. Yeah, Amen. I think connections is difficult. Connection, true connections with people will continue to be uh, more and more mm -hmm. difficult as we invest, as technology gets better and better. Well, you you have to worry about uh, your teenager wanting a cell phone. God forbid I have to worry about my teenager wanting a Neuralink. Yeah, well, you've got your your oldest is six. Uh huh. So I mean, by the time they're twelve, you know that might be. Dad, I want to get that. Uh, thing implanted in the back of my skull that helps me talk with granite whenever i want to right um, and then there, there's also there's also uh cars you mentioned tesla but there, there's the car aspect which is there's a lot of folks predicting that my elder daughter may never need a driver's license which is just beyond thinking for me one because i really like driving right yeah. but but it's just beyond thinking for me so uh, there's lots of food for thought here, and we are, I think, up to our time. And I don't want to, I don't want to have too many episodes that go two hours because then nobody will listen to them. So <laughs> let's put a pin in those other things and come back to them. Those those cool. bigger, those bigger topics, and uh, and I'll go ahead and wrap up. So uh, any closing thoughts? Oh no, man! It's it's a daily uh, it's a daily fight. And things change, the kids change, and so um, it's good to talk about. And uh, really appreciate you having me on, Andy. It was a fun conversation, man. Uh, and uh, I'd love to do it again with you whenever you're ready. Fantastic. Well, we appreciate you coming on. Uh, tell everybody where they can find you. Uh, you can find me on LinkedIn. I'm there all the time. Uh, Brian Gutierrez, uh, and uh, that's all. That's all for now. Just on LinkedIn. Hit me there. Cool. And that's Brian with a Y. There's a yeah, lot of Brian with a Y. And while I'm at it, Andy, uh, my email address is Brian, that's B-R-Y-A-N dot T-Q-G at gmail.com. Hit me up there as well. Fantastic. Well, if anybody would like to continue this conversation, I can vouch. Otherwise, you wouldn't be here. Brian is a pretty cool guy who you'd probably love to talk to yourself. Uh, hit him up. As for me, uh, I'm Apollo Siso, Andy Bennett, and this has been Cybersecurity Distilled. Uh, you can find us at Apollo-IS.com, and we're also on social media, uh, all, all the good socials. We've got our Facebook and our LinkedIn. Nobody really goes to the Facebook, but we have it because we've had it for many, many years. We've also got a YouTube channel where you, can, where you will be able to find videos like this and lots of others. And our podcasts, uh, both mine and our president, Dave Tyson's, are out every week, um, every other week. His, his comes out one week and mine comes out the next. And so, as always... Until next time, raise your glass to preparedness, vigilance, and resilience, sir.